Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I'd like to tackle a problem on pseudo inverses. So given a matrix A, which is not square, so it's just one and two, uh, first, what is its pseudo inverse? So A plus uh, I'm using to denote the pseudo inverse. Then secondly, compute A plus A and A A plus. And then thirdly, if x is in the null space of A, what is A plus A acting on x? And uh, lastly, if x is in the column space of A transpose, what is A plus A x? So I'll let you think about this problem for a bit, and I'll be back in a second. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so let's take a look at this problem. Uh, now, first off, what is a pseudo inverse? Well, we define the pseudo inverse using the SVD. So in actuality, this is nothing new. Now, we note that because a is not square, uh, the regular inverse of A doesn't necessarily exist. However, we do know that the SVD exists for every matrix A, whether it's rectangular or not, or sorry, rather, whether it's square or not. So how do we compute the SVD of a matrix? Well, let's just recall that the SVD of a matrix has the form of U sigma V uh, transpose, where U and V are orthogonal matrices, and sigma is uh, a matrix with uh, positive values along the diagonal, or zeros along the diagonal. And uh, let, let's just take a look at the dimensions of these matrices for a second. So we know that A is a 1 by 2 matrix. And uh, the way to figure out what the dimensions of these matrices are, uh, I usually always start with the center matrix, sigma. And sigma is always going to have the same dimensions as A, so it's going to be a 1 by 2 matrix. U and V are always square matrices. So to make this multiplication work out, we need V to have 2. And because it's square, it has to be 2 by 2. And likewise, U has to be 1 by 1. So we now have the dimensions of uh, U, sigma, and V. And note, because, sigma, or because U is a 1 by 1 matrix, the only orthogonal 1 by 1 matrix is just 1. So U we already know is just going to be the matrix, the identity matrix, which is a one by one matrix. OK, now how do we compute V and sigma? Well, we can take A transpose and A. And if we do that, we end up getting the matrix V uh, sigma uh, transpose sigma. Uh, v transpose. And this matrix is going to be a square matrix where the diagonal elements are squares of the singular values. So computing v and uh, the values uh, along sigma just boil down to diagonalizing a transpose a. Uh, so what is a transpose a? Well, in our case, it's 1, 2 times 1, 2, which gives us 1, 2, 2, 4. And note that uh, the second row is just a constant multiple uh, times the first row. Now, what this means is uh, we have a zero eigenvalue. So we already know that lambda 1 is going to be 0. So one of the eigenvalues of this matrix is 0. And of course, when we square root it, this is going to give us a singular value sigma, which is also 0. And this, this is generally a case uh, when we have um, a sigma which is not square. We typically always have zero uh, singular values. Now, to compute the uh, second eigenvalue, well, we already know how to compute the eigenvalues of a matrix, so I'm just going to t tell you what it is. The second one is lambda is 5. And if we just take a quick look, what the corresponding eigenvector is going to be to lambda is 5, it's going to uh, satisfy this equation. So we can take the eigenvector u to be 1 and 2. 
However, remember that when we compute the eigenvectors for this orthogonal matrix V, they always have to have a unit length. And this vector right now doesn't have a unit length. We have to divide by the length of this vector, which in our case is 1 over root 5. And if I go back to the lambda equals 0 case, uh, we also have another eigenvector, which I'll just state. You can actually compute it uh, quite quickly just by noting that it has to be orthogonal to this eigenvector, 2 and 1. OK? So what this means is A has a singular value decomposition, which looks like 1, so this is u, times sigma, which is going to be root 5, 0. Remember that uh, the first sigma is actually the square root of the eigenvalue, times a matrix, which looks like now we have to order the eigenvalues up in the correct order. Because 5 appears in the first column, we have to take this uh, vector to be in the first column as well. So this is 1 over root 5. This is 2 over root 5. Negative 2 over root 5. And 1 over root 5. And now this is v. But the singular value is v. The singular value decomposition is defined by v transpose. OK, so this gives us a representation for A. And now once we have the SVD of A, how do we actually compute A plus, or uh, the pseudo inverse of A? Well, just note, if A was invertible, then the inverse of A in terms of the SVD would be V transpose times the inverse of sigma. Oh, sorry, this is not V transpose. This is just V. So it would be V sigma inverse U transpose. And uh, when, when A is invertible, uh, sigma inverse exists. So in our case, uh, sigma inverse doesn't necessarily exist because sigma, note this is sigma, sigma is root 5 and 0. So we have to construct an, uh, a pseudo inverse for sigma. So the way that we do that is we take 1 over each singular value, and we take the transpose of sigma. So when A is not invertible, we can still construct a pseudo inverse by taking V uh, sigma, an approximation for sigma inverse, which in our case is going to be 1 over the singular value and 0. So note how uh, where sigma is invertible, we take the inverse, and then we fill in zeros in the other areas times U transpose. And we can work this out. We get 1 over root 5, 1 minus 2, 2, 1, 1 over root 5, 0. And if I multiply things out, I get 1 fifth, 1, 2. Okay, so this is an approximation for A inverse, which is the pseudo inverse. Okay, so this finishes up part one, and I'll start on part two in a second. Okay, so now that we've just computed A plus, uh, the pseudo inverse of A, we're going to investigate some properties of uh, the pseudo inverse. Okay, so for part two, we need to compute a uh, times A plus and A plus times A. Okay, so we can just go ahead and do this. So A, A plus, we can do uh, fairly quickly, one fifth, one two. 
And when we multiply it out, we get 1 plus 4 divided by 5 is 1. So we just get uh, the 1 by 1 matrix, which is 1, the identity matrix. And uh, secondly, if we take a plus times a, we're going to get 1 fifth, 1, 2 times 1, 2. And we can just fill in this matrix, which is 1 fifth, 1, 2, 2, 1. OK. And uh, this concludes part two. So now uh, let's take a look at uh, what happens when a vector x is in the null space of A, and then secondly, what happens when x is in the column space of A transpose. So for part three, uh, let's assume x is in the null space of A. Well, what's the null space of A? We can quickly check that the null space of A is a constant times any vector uh, minus 2, 1. Okay, so that's the null space. So if x is, for example, i.e., if we take x is equal to minus 2, 1, and we were to say multiply it by a plus a acting on x, we see that we get 0. And this isn't very surprising because, well, if x is in the null space of a, we know that a acting on x is going to be 0. So that no matter what matrix uh, a plus is, when we multiply by 0, we'll always end up with 0. OK, and then lastly, uh, let's take a look at the column space of A transpose. Well, A transpose is 1, 2. So it's any constant times the vector 1, 2. And specifically, if we were to take, say, x is equal to 1, 2, we can work out a plus a acting on the vector 1, 2. So we have 1 fifth, 1, 2, 2, 1. So recall this is a plus a. And if we multiply it on the vector 1, 2, we get 1 plus 4 is 5 divided by 5, so we get 1. 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, oh, sorry. I copied the matrix down. So it's 2 plus uh, 8, which is 10 divided by 5, is 2. And we see that at the end, we recover the vector x. So in general, if we take a plus a acting on x, where x is in uh, the column space of a transpose, we always recover x at the end of the day. So intuitively, what does this matrix a plus a do? Well, if x is in the null space of a, it just uh, kills it. We just get 0. If x is not in the null space of a, then we just get x back. So it's essentially the identity matrix acting on x whenever x is uh, in the column space of A transpose. Now specifically, if A is invertible, then A doesn't have a null space. So what that means is when A is invertible, A plus A recovers the identity because when we multiply it on any vector, we get that vector back. OK, so I'd like to conclude here. And uh, I'll see you next time.